always something that needs a little fixing on Bar Point Farms. Hey guys, it is Eric here at Far Point Restorations. Check it out. We've got a scan tool review. First new scan tool review here on the channel. ABS Airbag and Reset Tool. CGSULIT is the brand and the item number is SC630. ABS, SRS, steering angle sensor, live data, plus free updates. That's nice. I, of course, have this beautiful, beautiful 2001 Volvo that is constantly living its life with check engine lights on. No matter what, it's going to have check engine lights on. So it's the perfect car to demonstrate a tool like this. I'm going to go ahead and unbox it. And we will take a look at what you get. And of course, I will leave a link to this item in the description below. But uh, yeah, here we go. Nice little case for it here. I like that. We have an update cable, it looks like. Yep. We have a fairly decent sized manual here. And it's in color. Huh? Cool. And it's all in English. Even more impressive. And it is 36 pages long, so quite a bit to read there. I certainly will have my work cut out for me, <laughs> no doubt about it. All right, we'll move that aside. This is a hardwired. This is not a Bluetooth dongle or wireless. This is hardwired, like most of your uh, low, your you know your beginning scan tools are. Although this one does do some stuff that a lot of your beginning scan tools did not do just a few years back. So that's kind of cool. And we'll take a look at the cable here. We're gonna do it here. Yeah, we're looking at like a three foot at least. Yeah, in fact, it's, I think it's more like four or five. Regular OBD2 port, no special connectors, so uh, if you have some kind of exotic or early OBD2, you might not be the tool for you, but for most products or most cars out there these days, it certainly will be. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. Now, while I won't show the update process, there certainly is an update process, and you can see the connectors here. We have function keys, no yes, up, down, left, right, and question, and it's like a you know, obviously if you're using greasy mechanic hands on it, it's not, it doesn't have anywhere for trash to get in between the buttons. It's like a membrane keyboard from the old days, something in ZX81 era. <laughs> and uh, there's the back information for you. And up here, RF, I wonder what that is. Hmm, fascinating, I don't know. But there we go. There's our little update port right there. So you plug that into the computer, go to their website, and if there are available updates, which I'm sure there are, those would be where you would find them. Let us go to the fine Volvo that I have and take a look and see just how well this works. All right, here we are out in the car. The key is on. I'm going to roll a window down. I'm going to roll both windows down. I'm a rebel. And the reason I say that is because it's a Volvo, so you never know if the windows will go back up. Check it out. Here we are. I would have shown you the boot up procedure, but it's nearly instantaneous. By the time I put the scan tool down and picked the camera up, it had already loaded. So it's just as the splash screen, C-G-S-U-I-L-T, C-G Sulit. And there you go. So we have a history, auto VIN, OBD2, steering angle sensor, airbag and ABS, and settings. Let's go, let's go down to settings first. Then we have language select, unit. Well, let's see, I don't know what the unit's set to from the factory, but we're America. Yeah, we're gonna go to Imperial settings right there. So there we go. And we'll back out of that. And we got shortcuts. What kind of cars do we want as our shortcuts? We can edit that. And that's really cool. So you can pick your model. So for me, uh, look at all these cars too. Bentley, wanna work on Bentleys? Well, this is your car. Well, I got a Mitsubishi, so let's, let's program one for Mitsubishi, huh? I got a lot of Mitsubishis. There we go. So I'll press F1 and that's going to program that to F1. Ta-da. Right, but we're not working on that right now, so we don't want to do that. <laughs> All right, but we have done that, so uh, yeah. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to back out of that mess. Um, and now you can see Mitsubishi is loaded, right? I could do that one for Volvo. But I'm not going to uh, waste your time going through all that. You see how easy it is. I can press this and see what the version is, right? Here's the boot number, when it was done, so on and so forth. So last, uh, I would say it's a 2021, um, you know, software. So I would certainly take the time to update this. We have a keypad test. We have a display test. And yeah, that, that about wraps that up. So let's back out of that. 
and we're going to go and see because this car is a early one it is not commonly detectable by the auto VIN software but we'll give it a shot i always like to try whenever i try out a new scan tool i'm always like okay can it do this so we're going to automatically see if we can figure that out and it's going to give it a shot i hope it finds it but i doubt it <laughs> not to disparage the sc630 but i just uh i'd say out of the tools i try usually usually about one in ten work that's how bad the Volvos are for auto detect. Now newer ones are fine, but uh, these old ones they just they just don't do well. Okay, so as as uh, expected, the, the VIN just didn't work out on this car. Not a surprise, and definitely not indicative of the situation you may incur with your car unless you drive a 2001 Turd. So let me back out of that. Oh, I guess I gotta press OK. F3 is OK. So let's get out of that. We're gonna go in and we'll manually pick our car here in a bit, but. Go ahead and hit yes to OBD2. We'll go in on the generic side, and um, that it will auto scan and properly check. So we're going to do that, and there we go. We just found it. So mill status that is malfunction indicator light, check engine light, service engine soon light. Those are all different words for the same thing. And it's saying, yep, check engine lights on because of course it's a Volvo, and it is. Codes found too, and then it has readiness monitors, M monitors slash NA. That means. That car's not equipped with those things. Monitors okay means it has run those monitors. And monitors incomplete would be if I reset the, the uh, check engine light and took it for a test drive, I come back and I check to see, is this thing ready to go through state inspection? And in this case, um, it is, except the check engine light's on so it would fail. <laughs> Do we want to look at the transmission or the engine? Yeah, we want to look at the engine. And we can read our codes. Let's see what codes we have this time. It's always uh, exciting to see on the Volvo what exactly has broken this week. Stored codes and pending codes. We're going to go stored. O2 sensor, bank one, sensor one, and EVAP leak, large leak. So probably a hose cracked for the EVAP leak. On this car, the O2 sensor is setting a code because I am cheap and did not buy a Denso or Bosch branded O2 sensor. I replaced it on this car about, well, I don't know, it's been about a year, maybe a year and a half. And it'll work for a while, and then it'll get angry because it doesn't cycle fast enough, and it'll set that code, and so I just reset it. You can save these functions. Boop, hit that button there. And I can say blah, 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 right? I can save this. I'm not going to do that right now, but I could totally do that if I wanted to. If you were a technician working on a car and you wanted to keep a file of things, well, here, my friends, is how we do that. All right, I'm going to back out of there. I could take a look at pending codes. No pending codes. That's good. So these are the problems that she has, and hopefully no more coming, right? I can erase the codes, and I can look at live data, and I don't have the engine on, and I also, uh, I don't want to start it up this early in the morning. It's like, <laughs> well, it's about three minutes after sunrise here. Um, now, now I, I take it back. It's about 10 minutes after sunrise. So I will, I will only do this with the engine off, but we have faults. We have, we can, you can just roll through here. I'll show you some of the things fuel system calculated load coolant temp and you also have the ability to go to graphs so if i want to look at it as a graph of course it's going to be flatlining right now but you get the idea right i mean there's a lot of stuff you can do here and you can save these so if you take a drive don't like what you see you can save it so you can do research on why is the fuel trim so crazy wow okay so it does have ignition advance that's cool Intake temp, airflow sensor readings, throttle position, that might work. Yeah, that works with the key off. So you can see it jump up when I hit the gas. Let off, should go back down. Cool. Right, so all right, let me back out of that. You guys get the idea on that. And of course you can make a custom list. So the problem with a complete list on many modern cars is that there's just so many PIDs it becomes impossible. PIDs are what we call each of those little um, items that it shows you. It becomes impossible for the computer to update that so, you know, 100, you know, like as it happens. And the idea here, if you're going to try to figure out what's wrong with your car, is you want to know when something's stumbling or misfiring, what's going on immediately. So if you suspect, say, a bad spark plug or a bad coil pack, going to custom list and looking at misfire codes through that, like misfire counters, that's the way to do it because you're going to get nearly um, instantaneous updates. So that's just for y'all to keep in mind. There's a free tip from a tech. Freeze frames. Well, we know we have codes. A lot of times it will take a freeze frame of what was going on when that code set. So let's go ahead and pop in there. 
freeze frame that caused it, right? There's my O2 sensor causing an issue. Calculated load, we were at idle, engine temp, we were uh, ice cold, pretty much at, at, oper at room temperature. Fuel trim, those aren't bad fuel trim numbers, honestly. RPM is at idle. We had just taken off from a stop, so I'm going to guess this car was first started, and that's what was going on. Not a whole lot to report on that one. In fact, again, it gets ugly with this car, not because there's actually a problem, but because that new sensor just doesn't cycle fast enough right out of the box. And that is the case, you know, like with an American car or with an Asian car, you can put literally any part on it and it's going to be happy. But when you get into Euro trash, um, these cars just, they just got to have what they got to have. If you don't put what you, what, what they call for in there, you're going to run into issues. And I hate it for customers who are looking to save a buck, myself included. And they'll be like, oh, I'll just get this, you know, generic O2 sensor. I'll get this generic uh, airflow sensor or mass sensor or whatever. And you end up getting screwed. Now, you can get away with like an aftermarket oil sender or ECT. But if it's something that needs to cycle quickly or provide accurate results, close enough is not close enough for, for a car like this. you got to have exactly what the computer's looking for. The tolerances are so tight as far as what it's looking for. Where I think your Asian cars and certainly your American cars, they're loose. They're, you know, they wait for things to really be wrong before they let you know about it and set a code. So, uh, yeah, there's some more free, free advice for you, free info. Our readiness, we can actually run monitor tests if we need to, to speed the process along. So that's kind of cool. And then component tests, yeah, we can actually activate. Let's see if any of that works on the generic side. I don't think it would, but yeah, you have to go in with the VIN number. You could activate a fan. You could activate stuff like that. So component tests, depending on the model, that's almost like you know mid-level or pro-level stuff when you have bi-directional controls. Through the generic OBD2 side, which I went in on, a lot of times it just doesn't, doesn't know what the car's equipped with, so it won't let you do that. And then vehicle info, it'll tell you, hey, it's a 2001, it's a blah, 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 blah. All right, let's get out of that. And let's get into these, uh, and these might want me to enter the VIN. Airbag and ABS, we're going to go with Asian, European is what we're driving here, so we'll hit that. And we're going to go all the way down to Volvo. There she is. Oops. Oh, I could have gone up to go to Volvo. Oh, I couldn't go up to go to Volvo, but I can go down past it. That's kind of a bummer. When you have this much coverage, it would be nice if you could kind of scroll. But there we go. Volvo it is. Uh, we're going to manually select, so I don't have to hit the VIN, but... Oh, wow. It actually detects 98s. That's kind of impressive. A lot of uh, 98 to 2,000 models, they just... They don't work well with any scan tool other than OEM. North American model. And we have a Volvo XC70. So V70, it might say V70. Yeah, V7001 right there. 2001, that's the engine. That's it. And there we're in. We're going to diagnose it. And of course, I do not have, but I can, I can scan everything. We'll go ahead and scan it all. I do not have... Uh, any codes in the ABS or the anti-lock, but look at that, it does have a system. Usually on these cars, your fault may be like um, no speed detected or no fault, you know, the fault will say you haven't moved. So unless you have been driving, driving the car and not reset the, you know, turn it off, turn it back on, it might show a fault, but that'll be a lie. So don't get confused on that, but I will read the codes just to show you what it says. Oh wow, so control module comm. So at some point, probably on a startup, it was uh, it lost communication on startup for a second. So those are codes that actually exist. So that's cool, and you can save that if you want to do further diag. In this case, we don't need to do that, and I won't I won't delete it. But uh, you can see the other stuff there, and looks like we have some component activation, which again is uh, is pretty impressive for a uh, you know low, I won't say low end, but like when we're looking at um, oh my gosh, yeah, that's very bi-directional right there. That's crazy. All right, so like when you're looking at a, a tool like this, I would have assumed that this would have been what I would call a GS tool, general service, an entry-level technician's tool, um, or something perfect for the homeowner. Looking at this, this is clear to me that this is a pro-level access right here. I can, if I have a code saying, you know, left valve front inlet not operational, I can now manually go in, that's called bi-directional controls in this industry, and I can check those. So, um... I am super impressed. I will say I'm very, very impressed with that. I did not know that it would have that deep 
of a um, of of a, of a way of getting into the system. I mean, that's that's pretty darn pretty darn pretty darn cool. Pretty darn cool. So I'm gonna back out. Um, we'll take a look at steering angle sensor, and uh, then we'll wrap it up. It's probably gonna be the very same. And steering angle sensor, sh I don't think there's going to be anything to activate on a steering angle sensor other than just readout. So we should be able to get in and watch steering angle as far as live data. I'm suddenly wishing I had already preset OBD to F2 to be Volvo, but I guess I... There's Volvo. Manual selection again because our VIN doesn't work. We are looking at that. We are North American, and we are V70XC, we are 2001, we are, yes, yes, and here we go. Oh, wow, okay, so we're not going to calibrate the steering angle sensor, but again, suddenly I am again uh, telling you that I cannot believe that what we're looking at here is definitely mid to pro level information. I'm shocked. I'm impressed. I really like this. So if you were going to be doing alignment, so you're a you're a B level tech, you're you're halfway through your career, you know, you're moving on up, you're almost a master tech, and you are going to get a tool, well, you might just be surprised that something of this size and price range is going to be able to do stuff like this. Steering angle calibrations, anytime you do an alignment, especially, especially on cars that have driver uh, alert systems, driver you know, anti-collision stuff, that needs to be recalibrated whenever you do an alignment. So this tool will allow you to do that. Man, that's crazy. Seriously, super happy with this. Well, I guess that'll do it. I mean, I'm surprised. Here I am reviewing it. And of course, there's always surprises when you do a review. This surprise is really surprising. If you have any questions about the tool, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section. I'll see what I can do. And of course, I will leave a link to where you can purchase one of these for yourself. Till next time, my friends, take care.